Welcome back guys, this is going to be the <clears throat> sixth part of our video tutorial series on AngularJS, Node.js and Express.js that, that we are um, doing basically a um, simple CRUD application that we are writing using all those technology. If you have been following along my video tutorial, and you know, last time we basically wrote some AngularJS controller and we wrote a service. Uh, let's look it into our the service called product category service and here we had a little method called get product category ID. As you as you can see this guy, this method in this control in this service uh, requires the product category ID to be passed when it when when it gets invoked, right? So the idea is we would like to go into backend database and face the data by the primary key of the table. And to do that, of course, we are using, you know, we are injecting the Angular HTTP service. Even call it, we are calling it the get method because that's what we're doing. Um, and this is the endpoint that we would like to define. Of course, this endpoint doesn't exist in our server side, in our service yet. So when we call this one, of course, we need to pass the category ID. So in the browser, our service kind of looks like this. Our, 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 REST, our REST service kind of looks like this. Um, get product category by ID. Of course, this node or this endpoint or this URL doesn't exist yet, so that's why we are saying, hey, I cannot display because it doesn't, there is no configuration so that I can display this endpoint. Okay, that's the next thing we're going to do, okay? Of course, to do that, and if you have been following along, we go into our um, product category route configuration here, and we're going to add one more route into our route table. So this route kind of looks similar to this we we'll get all product category. So in here, I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead and add new route into, into our route table. This is our array, and then we're adding one more route. The request type is get, but of course the endpoint instead of get all product category, it's going to be um, get product category by ID. Uh, not only that, because we also need to pass the uh, the product category ID. So to do that in 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 um, Node.js or Express.js, this is what we do. We say product category ID and then of course you know and now I need to require my DAO object that's what I'm doing in line number 123 and after that into this object I'm, I'm, I need to define a method of course that method hasn't been defined so I'm going to say uh, get well instead of I'm going to write similar kind of method here. Get product category by ID. And of course this method, just by the looking at the signature you can see I need to pass the product category ID. So I can obtain that information by request using params dot product category ID. Okay? And then of course the second parameter of this method is the callback function as you can see right here. So that is all we have to do for the configuration. And let's um, now I want to let's go into our DAO object, product category DAO. In here, um, okay, I ha I defined I created a little little method here called get product category by ID. This method looks very similar to get all products only the primary instead of I have a where clause right. So I just require the connection, and this is my SQL statement right here. And only different in, in, is on line number 71 when I call method called query. I pass the first statement, that is the first parameter, that is my query statement. And second parameter is because in this case I need to pass the product category ID, the placeholder for this question mark here, okay? And then third parameter is, as you know, in Node.js, their pattern is a callback function to be invoked. And if there is error, just handle it. And just to see the data come out, okay, and then this is a callback the client is going to call. And I just call, make the call to this function right here and pass the rows coming out from here. And, if, and then finally, I close the connection. That is all. 
let's see um, by doing this we should be able to our wrist should be ready to go okay let's refresh this guy uh, look at that that's really sweet so basically it's our wrist service is now start returning the JSON data that our client can consume it okay use it from the angular JS and I have a huge amount of data let's see um, this changes Okay, see, I have, I've been playing with this, so I have some data here. So as you can see, the as I as I change the URL of the route, the ID, different kind of category came in, the data change. That is good. At least you know our server is started sending the JSON data to the client, REST, REST data to our client. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, of course, you know, um, now um, if I run into Okay, before I can I can I can go here. Um, let me first refresh this page. You now our JSON is working, which is good. If I go into uh, not the create product view product category and go into edit, of course you know that we don't have done the wiring up. I mean like our um, if we go into the markup the HTML page, well in this case easiest page call uh, edit product category here. Of course. We haven't um, obtained or require our all the Angular JS file or, or, or everything that we so in here. This is what we have to do. So um, what I'm going to do next, um, I need to have all these JavaScript files, okay? Um, up to here. It's a good practice to uh, put your JavaScript at the end of the page because, like, when its page is loading, if you if you put the code, I mean, sometimes you know some of the files perhaps you put into the head section of the HTML, but the especially custom JavaScript code you can load um, later, so that your page start, you don't have it doesn't have to wait to load or face the uh, the JavaScript file. Okay. In here, basically, I need the Angular that, is, and I need this common module and the service I need. But instead of um, this service, we need to now load our, our our controller here. Name of our controller is Edit Product Category Controller. We need to have reference to that JavaScript file. This is create and this is our edit here. Okay. And of course, this is the name of our JavaScript file. So, um, and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this code. So, as you can see, you know, I, 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 I included all the files that we need. Of course, we need Angular and we need our common module and the service and the controller called Edit Product Category Controller. Let's see if the, everything is good. It should, it, start, it should work. We should be able to uh, consume the array services that we defined. There might be, there is a possibility that, that there should be some syntax error or something, but we'll fix it if there are. Yay! Awesome! As you can see now, you know, it is started populating. It fits the data, and now the idea was, you know, like based on this ID, I was able to obtain. Now, now this, now, you know, now the user can go ahead and edit this information. Maybe this text is not a valid text or maybe a spelling error or whatever so they can change it okay that is really good and now I can go ahead and get rid of all the alert from my I had one alert here I don't need that anymore I'm, I know it's that it works and I go into edit product category controller and as you can see right here the method and I have some alert here also. That's why I 
If I refresh this one, I shouldn't have any alert. Let's go. Uh, I'm, if I let's go ahead and choose a different one. As you can see, a different data come in and automatically set into the uh, text box, right? I mean the text area and the text box right here. The next thing we should be able to do, of course, we should be change the data right here, and then we can uh, we we should be able to edit the product category. When we do that, we should be able to update this information. We should be able to persist that information into back in database. That's the next thing we're gonna do. Okay. Let's see how we can do how let's see even before that I would like what I would like to show you today was mainly the validation. That is the valid for example when, when I say validation I have a custom validation uh, using AngularJS. Um let me show you what I mean. Like here if you just create this one this is this is the custom validation that I wrote. Uh, this is I would like to have the, exactly the same feature for um, of course the text might be different of this you, of course you might have some messages different because the edit but I would like to have the same kind of feature also included into our edit product category okay so um, that feature I'll, I'll briefly explain to you how I did that one okay and how to integrate this feature into our um, edit portion also. To do uh, to do that, uh, let me briefly explain what I did. Um, very first thing I did is I created a markup here called um, validation summary as the EGS file. This validation summary has some uh, markup here. Let me, if I bump the size here, make 150. So I have a container, a div, div tag right here. Give a class, the bootstrap class called alert danger. That's why, you know, it looks kind of like this nice alert kind of CSS style. And of course, and I have a, a, I have a data ng show a directive, Angular directive. That would be so. Idea is like I would like to show this if there is no data entering this text box. For example, if I do not enter any, if I enter anything here, but this is also require fill. If I do not enter here, it says hey, enter something into the product category also. That's the idea. So that I have, of course, in my controller, I will show you later. I I, I will have to have a property called validation result. And that validation result object contains a property called contains validation error. By default, of course, that has to be a false. That is set to false. But before it makes us okay, even and after that, I just a message right here, and then I have this UL tag on order list, HTML, and I I have to give some ID here and then some CSS. That is all I did. Okay. In for the markup. Once that is all defined, let me go ahead and close this one. Now, of course, you know, in 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 uh, in my um, in my create a product category controller. Let me slightly bump the font so that I can explain to you better. So what I did, like like I like I showed you in the markup. So basically, I defined this object here and under scope validation result. This object literal contains two property called contains validation error, as I said, and is set to false by default. And validation, well, actually, um, initially I thought about using this one, but I haven't used this one. I use I use slightly different approach. Okay, I'll show you. And then, this is the method that. That when that get calls, that is the method called when you when you, for example when you click the create product category button. So the idea is idea is very simple. So before you can you have some validation here before you can um, based on the validation if there is a problem if the user do not enter any text in those required field. All this code get executed. You you wouldn't be you wouldn't allowed to make a call to the backend server, you know, because those be 
Now, at least we have our custom JavaScript validation. Well, not the good thing is like we are not really manipulating huge amount of DOM, like a DOM object, like in jQuery or plain vanilla JavaScript. Everything is done as an object in, in the Angular JS side. Okay. So what? So basically, what I did, um, I created a, a, a custom service. I'll show you. The, I created here. In my app folder, I created a, a custom service called require validation service. This service is pretty easy, simple. The reason I put I created a service for this validation, the idea is this logic could be shared by all the other other pages also. So I don't have to write the same logic in so many other places. So I can share that. All I have to do is inject this service and then I'm all ready to go. So here, um, here is my using the same module. I define a factory object called require validation service, and as you can see, the in line number seven here. And of course, and, I, and inside this one, I have a little private method. My convention is since it's a private inside this guy, so it, that's why it's underscore. It's just my convention, you know. And then when this method gets called, you need to pass the array of object. So I will show you the how it, how to invoke this method, and then on line 12 I can I can ask Angular to do a for each. This is since this is an array, I can do a for each on each iteration. I'm going to say whether the name property, if it's not undefined, means it's a defined. It contains something. It's defined, right? And then also at the same time, it's either it's a null or empty or length is zero. I would like to add those error messages into it into the my array here error messages and finally return the error message to the to the client and of course you know this is a private method so I have to return to the caller to do that I have to return this object literal here okay this is all I had to do in and of course this as you will see later in the in the, in the future video this method is very shareable other module can use it that's why it is in very just this code is just you know um, by itself, and then once that is all done, and then I basically uh, before I call my service, I want to make sure the required field like category name and the category detail, it contains some data. Use the enter the input. Of course, we can use the same pattern. This is just a just a uh, required field validation. You can do all your custom validation like you know uh, regular. What based on your uh, requirement, you can do whatever. You can apply the same pattern, and as 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 I told you, you know when I call this method into my service, I pass this uh, array of data here, name property, and then it has error messages. And then if there is error, this 61, I would handle it. Then remember, like I have this validation result object, and it has a property. This becomes true. That forces this um this reason this reason to be visible when I click the button. Okay, that is the little deviation, but I need a validation. That's why I created. So I wanted to share that one with you guys. Okay, so what I'm going to do next? Well, it's been a while, so I'm going to stop this tutorial for uh, this uh, this session, and then starting from next video tutorial, what I'm we will have will be I will show you how to write the edit portion of the code. So um, not in here. Um, In the next video tutorial, this is what we'll be doing. Of course, you know, we'll have a validation here. I will be doing that one. I'll just show you how I did. And then after that, we'll be writing this code here. Right now, it doesn't, we don't have that method. And we don't have our, we don't have a method in our controller. And we don't have a service. And all those will be defining. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching my videos. Talk to you all later. Thank you. Bye.